Okay, um, so um, welcome everybody and thank you for joining this webinar session on the Restart Grants. Um, just to make everyone aware, we are recording this session today. You'll see a, a notice at the top of the screen um, and this is so we can make it available to people um, after the session and it'll be on our, on our website. Um, I'm Gemma, my name is Gemma Davis and I'm the Director for Economy and Housing at Cheshire Western Chester Council and I'm chairing the session today. Um, thank you for taking the time to participate um, and, and give up um, an hour of your time. This, uh, we are aiming to do the webinar in, in an hour and there will be time for questions as well um, once, we've, once we've had a presentation. Um, we wanted to really just acknowledge, um, obviously, the, the last 12 months plus. Um, we've done these sessions before and um, the, the challenges have, have continued, really, um, particularly because of COVID, but, but a number of other challenges and difficulties as, as well that have faced businesses and individuals. And as we move towards more businesses reopening from Monday, um, the focus of, of this session is very much around the restart and reopening support and the grants that the government announced to be able to support businesses to do that. Um, so um, we will be going through some slides um, to explain the content of the, the grants and um, the application process. Um, and I'm joined by colleagues from the business growth team today and by Jude Green, who's our head of transactional services. And Jude will be taking us through the details of the, of the grants. If you can, please save your questions um, until after Jude's finished her presentation. Um, and there will be opportunity then to answer any questions that we haven't been uh, we haven't been able to answer during the course of the presentation. Um, so we'll be able to we'll be able to come to you for those questions at the end. So I'm now going to hand over to Jude um, to introduce herself, and then we'll move into the slides. Thank you, Jude. No Good afternoon, everybody. Um, my name is Jude Green, and I've had the unenviable task over the last 12 months of uh, the business support grants coming within my remit. Um, but uh, just to give you some headline figures before I go into my presentation, we have to date um, uh, provided businesses with support in excess of £114 million in grants over the last 12 months. And obviously now we're going into a new series of grants and uh, I will turn my camera off for my presentation uh, so you don't see me squinting at my screen uh, and I'll take my presentation on a larger screen. But hopefully this will help people start to understand the new grants that the government have introduced from the 1st of April and the new policy that the council has introduced with regards to our additional restrictions grant. Um, as Gemma alluded to, if you could hold back any questions until the end of my presentation because I have included some frequently asked questions that we've received over the last couple of days around the restart grants, the additional restrictions grant policy. Um, but hopefully I, I aim to answer as many as I possibly can within my presentation, but I don't um, allude to have all the answers. So if you do have a question at the end that I'm not able to answer, we will be making a note of these and we will be circulating uh, a, a, a frequently asked questions or responding to your questions if I don't have the answer at the time that you ask it. So uh, I'll put that caveat out there now and apologise in advance for not being able to answer any questions. So uh, Pete, if you'd be kind enough to move on to the next screen. So I thought I'd just give a purpose for the presentation and the purpose for the presentation is to provide you all with an update on business grant payments made to date by Cheshire West and Chester Council to provide an overview of the government's restart grants from April 2021, to provide an overview of Cheshire West and Chester Council's additional restrictions grant policy from April 2021. I'll talk you through the application process because it's slightly different this time. Um, I'll provide you with some answers to some frequently asked questions that we've been having over the last couple of days, as I said, and then I will try my best to answer any additional questions that you may have at the end of my presentation. Uh, but again, I, I, I apologise in advance if I'm not able to answer your question, but we will get back to you with an answer if we can. Uh, Pete, if you'd like to move on, please. 
So I thought I'd put in a bit of background and I'm, I'm not going to read through these slides in any detail, but it's just to reinforce the, the number of grants that the council, all councils have been administering over the last, well, since November. If we take out the national lockdown grants and the discretionary grant of last March and last May, then we've had around about 10 different schemes that we've been administering since November. So it has been quite complicated for the council. We appreciate in some areas we've had a few delays as we've had to ask more questions and staff have had to learn the new processes. But these are just, you know, we had the local restrictions grant open, the local restrictions grant closed sector, the local restrictions grant closed. Next slide, please, Peter. The local restriction support grant for wet lead pubs. Uh, we've had a local restriction support grant closed top up and we've obviously been running a few tranches of additional restrictions grant. All of these have closed um, from the 31st of March 2021, except for and the government made it a little bit more complicated, except for what's called the local restrictions grant closed addendum, uh, which will run until the 30th of June. But we'll make that decision on behalf of businesses if you're actually entitled to that to that grant uh, rather than make the whole application process even more complicated if you'd like to move on peter please uh, so i just thought i'd give you some information i may be of interest it may not be of interest but this is the the current um grant uh, up, up till last monday we've received since the 9th of november 9589 applications we uh, successfully paid 7,057 applications. We're around about 150 I put on there for uh, outstanding waiting decisions and they, those decisions have to be made by the 30th of April, uh, but it's actually less than that. It's 112 applications we've got outstanding for schemes up to the 31st of March. And we're aiming to get those done, as I said, by the 30th of April. Uh, the number of success, unsuccessful applications we, we, we've processed have been 2,382. And the main reasons for being unsuccessful were businesses not meeting the criteria, living outside the area, not significantly financially impacted, uh, along with other reasons. And the total payments we've made to date uh, from the 9th of November is 42 million. And as you can see, just a, well, nearly 43 million pounds in payments to support businesses within the borough. Uh, next slide, please, Peter. So I'll go into a bit of detail now around the restart grants. So the restart grants are effective from the 1st of April 2021. And the government, there are they're a it's, it's a national scheme and all the eligibility criteria has been set by central government and there is no discretion on how the council council applies this um, this grant. Uh, there are two strands for the national restart grants for properties with a rateable value and that's the key. The restart grants, you have to have a rateable value, be liable for business rates, even if you receive a zero bill. You must be in the rating list as at the 1st of April 2021 and no payments can be made before this date. Uh, our application went live on the 31st of March, so we were in time for it to be live on the 1st of April. The payment will be made as a one-off payment and it's not cyclical as previously. So what the government has done previously is they've made a 14-day payment, they've made a 42-day payment, they've made a 42-4-day payment within the same type of grants. This time it is a one-off payment, it is not cyclical. Uh, the eligibility, as I stated, is, is prescribed by central government and can only be made paid to businesses that meet the criteria. And the, another difference is with the restart grants, it doesn't only apply to those businesses that were mandated to close. This is restart grants for businesses to support themselves, to be able to make themselves COVID safe to start business again when the world starts opening up, hopefully from next Monday. Fingers crossed for as many businesses as possible from next Monday if the government go along with the current plan. Next slide, please, Peter. So the strand one is non-essential retail. There's slides later on which will give you more detail around what non-essential retail is, but it's based on rateable values and there are three levels of payment. So that if you have a rateable value of £15,000 or less, the grant payment is 2,667. 
If your rateable value then sits in the middle between 15,001 and 50,999, the grant amount is 4,000 pounds. And if you have a rateable value over 51,000 pounds, the grant amount is 6,000 pounds. These are figures that have been set or amounts that have been set by central government. So there has been, the, the council cannot pay more than these amounts to, to businesses that meet the, the strand one uh, eligibility criteria. If you'd like to move on, please, Peter. So restart that strand two is slightly different. This is for hospitality, accommodation, leisure, personal care and gym and sport businesses. Again, it's the same three levels of rateable value, but the figures are increased. And uh, so the lower figure is 8,000, the middle figure being 12,000 and the higher figure being 18,000. And again, I stress this is a one-off payment and not cyclical. Uh, next slide, please, Peter. There isn't much more for me to say around the the, um, the, the restart grants because that basically is it. They, the government have made it that simple in effect that businesses that meet the criteria of those two strands will receive uh, a payment uh, prescribed by them within those three rateable value um, boxes. But what the council can do is the council have have the additional restrictions grant where we have a little bit more discretion around what we can use the additional restrictions grant for. We've used it over a couple of tranches. Uh, we've tried to replicate the government's prescribed schemes for those businesses that don't have a rateable value. So they don't miss out. But also previous tranches, we have um, supported businesses that have been severely financially impacted by the uh, uh, the COVID-19 uh, restrictions. So the funding on this particular tranche of additional restrictions grant will be used to support businesses that are not eligible for support through the restart grant and either fall into one of the categories below and we've replicated the restart grant categories or they have a significant percentage of turnover that relates to the supply and or support to these type of business categories. Uh, myself and a, a number of staff have been working with grants for over 12 months now and, and we have learned that there have been some elements of some business sectors that, that can or and have been falling through the cracks with regards to hospitality and leisure, for example, uh, event companies that may support weddings, wedding photographers, they are supporting the industry and haven't really been able to um, access grants as freely as, as other organisations and businesses have. So what we've built into our re additional restrictions grant is that we will consider applications from businesses that um, support the six um, uh, um, sectors that the government have stated in their, re their, their restart grants. Um, moving on, Peter. Um, so eligible businesses are likely to fall into uh, one of the following groups. So those operated from a residential location or an outdoor location. Uh, those operated from rented space within another business premises. Those operated from a shared building that only has a single assessment for business rates and those operated from a building that is awaiting evaluation by the valuation office agency. So these are the types of businesses that would not have a rateable value, that would fall into those categories, but would not be able to claim a restart grant because of the reasons they don't have a rateable value, to be fair. Um, so what we're trying to do, as I've said previously, is we're trying to replicate the scheme and to compensate those businesses that don't meet the national criteria. Next slide, please, Peter. So what I've done here, for, uh, there's a, a number of slides and um, it gives you a little bit more information about what for the additional restrictions grant, how much we will pretty much award in a grant. There is the caveat to all of it that we do not have uh, an infinite pocket of money. Um, we are restricted to the level of the, um, the, the, the award of additional restrictions grant funding. Uh, so therefore, whereas we've tried to replicate the figures as, as where, where we can uh, of the, um, the, the national scheme, um, if we have a huge influx of applications, we will need to review 
the levels of awards to make sure that we can support as many businesses as possible, which may mean that these figures are slightly reduced. I'm not going to read every word of every slide to you, I think, um, but it gives a bit more detail about what the money that the, the funding and the grants will be for each of the each of the sectors. So for non-essential retail, we're trying to replicate uh, for, for those businesses that employ 10 people or fewer will receive the lower value from the national scheme of 2667. And those businesses that employ 10 people or more will receive the middle amount of £4,000. Next slide, please, Peter. Hospitality again, the same caveat applies. So businesses that are operated from a residential property, so people that work from home will receive up to £2,000. Businesses that are operated from a premises will receive up to £12,000. And we also became aware that um, social clubs such as a Royal British Legion Club or a uh, uh, another type of social club, um, they were excluded from the government's wet lead £1,000 award at Christmas time, even though they do not supply food. So uh, we have, as a council, decided that those social clubs that we've identified uh, will actually now be compensated for the £1,000 they were not able to apply for at Christmas. Um, Chris, uh, sorry, Peter, if you'd like to move on. So accommodation, accommodation that is self-contained uh, will receive up to £4,000 and accommodation for multiple groups will receive up to £18,000. And again, the caveat being up to, we may have to reduce these figures. Next slide, please, Peter. Leisure, it's a little bit more complicated around leisure. There are a few more groups involved in the, in the leisure sector. So events and or experiences businesses. So, uh, for example, you might have an experience of going out on a Segway. That will be an experience business. Um, and they're operated from a, from a working from home property. They would receive up to £4,000. Um, experiences and events that are operated from a business premises up to £12,000. Travel organisers that operate individually from home or are mobile will receive up to £4,000. Travel organisers that uh, operate from a business premises and employ other people will receive up to £18,000. Coach operators, that's not coach tours because they're excluded from the scheme, it's coach operators can receive up to £18,000 and driving instructors will receive up to £1,000. And again, the caveat is these, num these figures may reduce. Next slide, please. Uh, personal care. Um, the personal care that are working from home or a residential property or a mobile asset will receive up to £500. And personal care businesses that are operated from a business premises will receive up to £2,000. What we mean by operating from business premises is what we have found in many of the personal care sector that we've been dealing with over the last 12 months. They rent a chair in a premise, so they don't have a rateable value and therefore they're eligible to claim a, a grant, but this will be up to £2,000. Next slide, please, Peter. Personal fitness and sports. Uh, personal fitness and sports that are operated from residential property or a public space can receive up to £2,000. And personal fitness and sports ministers that operate from a business premises. So there are individuals that, that have applied for grants through the last, fifth, uh, last 12 months um, that actually do rent a space uh, in a gym or rent a space in a school. So they actually operate their service from within a, a business premises. They will be in, eligible for a, a higher value of, um, of grants. And this is to reflect in all cases that People that work from home tend to have lower fixed costs and people that have to pay rent for premises tend to have higher fixed costs. Next step, please, Peter. Oh. So the eligibility criteria. So to be eligible for an award under the policy, um, you have to have been, and this is for both the restart grants and the additional restriction grants, um, it, you must have been, the business must have been trading. Now, we understand that many businesses were closed on the 1st of April and on the 31st of March due to government restrictions. Um, so what the government have provided us with is the government have provided us with some indicators about what trading means. So the business may have had staff on furlough. The business continued to trade either online or via a delivery or takeaway, click and collect, something along those lines. Um, or the business was actively preparing to reopen. 
Businesses that are in administration insolvent or have been issued with a striking off notice, they are not eligible for a grant. And this has been the case right the way through all the grant schemes. Businesses that have received grant payments that are equal to the maximum permitted levels of subsidy will not be eligible. So uh, due to the, the, uh, the country leaving the EU, um, we are now no longer come under what used to be known as state aid. There's now a subsidy level. Um, the subsidy details are on our website contained in the application form. Um, I have not put a slide out around the subsidy levels because it would take two or three slides to put all the details up. But I'm happy to put some slides together. So if individual businesses would like some information around the subsidies, we can uh, post that onto this um, Teams page in the chat in a couple of days. And then if you want to pick it up, you can pick it up from there. Um, so businesses must also be based in within the Cheshire West and Chester Council boundary and an application must be made um, online. Uh, next slide, please, Peter. All businesses, the government have made a number of changes um, within the, the requirements for paying grants. Uh, one of them is they are now collecting additional data, and that is why um, we have we have to ask businesses to apply for a restart grant or an additional restrictions grant because the data the government now wishes to collect, no council were previously collecting. So there were two options. We could have paid out the grants and then written to every business later and then tried to piece the business information back with the application number, which from our perspective for administering would be quite complicated. So as a council, we have chosen to actually open an application where we're going to gather all the data that the government requires from us in one place. And then when we have to submit a return to the government, we've already collected that data against an application form number. All businesses, however, we have to undertake two checks. One check is a prepayment check. Cheshire West and Chester Council, over the last 12 months, we have been undertaking checks. Uh, prepayment checks, but not been uh, instructed to take to make prepayment checks. And we will now have to undertake prepayment checks for every business that makes an application. We're not intending for this to slow the process down, but there is a chance that uh, because we have to do an, uh, uh, an automated check, that it may slow the process down of getting the payments out. But we are looking for a way that we can do this as quickly as possible. Again, if you, you will be contacted if you've made an application to be advised of the outcome of your, of, of your application. Um, the email will state that by accepting the grant payments that you are confirming that you're eligible for that grant payment and that you comply with the subsidy requirements. Once a decision has been made on an application, we aim to make the payment within three days. That's three working days. If a decision is made on a Friday, um, the, the payment will not be made on a Monday. Saturday and Sunday are not banking days. So if a decision is made on a Friday, it will be probably the Wednesday or Thursday of the following week. And it is really, really important for businesses that are submitting applications to ensure that they supply the correct details and up to date bank accounts as part of the application process. Um, our initial prepayment check will be based on the bank statement that we were asking for as the application process. Um, so we need to be clear that that matches the name on the application form. Uh, next slide, please, Peter. This may be a little bit small and I apologise for this and I'm not going to read out every single <laughs> uh, line on this. But the government presented us with a table of, of, of examples of businesses that meet non-essential retail. Uh, and, and what I've done within the slides so we can circulate the slides and people can have a closer look at it rather than squint at a screen at the moment. Um, so this is, an, a, it's, not, it's not a complete list, but this is the list that the government gave us for non-essential retail. Next slide, please, Peter. Uh, hospitality and leisure. Next slide, please, Peter. Accommodation, personal care, personal fitness and sport. And again, I apologise that that is so small, um, but um, if you get a copy of the slides, you'll be able to have a, a, a 
probably a better look at it. But and again, as I say, the lists are not ex- they're not complete. There may be individual businesses that meet the criteria that are, the government have not put on their list. But it gives a general idea of, of the the categories and what businesses fit the definition of each category. Next slide, please, Peter. So. Um, before I go into the frequently asked questions, I'll just uh, run by you. You will be required to make an application uh, for a restart grant or additional restrictions grant. Um, we have time scales which uh, for each of the applications. So the additional restrictions grant application window is open from the 1st of April to the 31st of May. And that is to ensure that we can actually make all the payments uh, within the government timelines of up to the 30th of June. With the additional restrictions grant, we will accept applications from businesses that are outside the criteria. However, we will make a decision on those businesses when we have made the decision on all the businesses that have met the criteria. Hence, we've got a short window to enable us to make all those decisions. There are two, well, three applications so if you're going onto our website and you want to apply for an additional restrictions grant, you need to scroll down. There is a there is a button, a satellite button at the top that you can click on, which will take you to the application. But we have had to because there are different timescales for the two uh, different grant types. We have had to do a multiple application process this time, whereas previously it's just been the one application. If you've got a rateable value, you apply for a restart grant. If you're a business without a rateable value, then you apply for an additional restrictions grant. Um, so over the last couple of days, these are the questions that have been coming through to us. Is uh, the one of them being, have, I have received a grant before, do I need to reply? Yes, you do. And this is because the government now have, required, have, have requested additional um, information that we need to collect. So that's why we're we're doing a, an application process. Uh, another question being, can I apply for a restart grant and an additional restrictions grant? The answer to that is no. You either meet the criteria for a restart grant or you meet the criteria for an additional restrictions grant. You will not receive both. A number of individual businesses have contacted us because they um, they have not been able to find their business rate number, although they are liable for business rates. We have recently sent out um, all our business um, uh, business rate demands, and it will be a, a number that starts with um, six, and uh, it's usually on the top left hand side, right hand side, sorry, of the of the uh, the bill. Um, we. We, we have not unfortunately got the time to be able for all the businesses that are contacting us and asking us what their business rate number is. Unfortunately, we don't have the time to look because our, our focus is, is getting the money out to you as quickly as we possibly can. So if you can find your business rate number and you keep looking for your business rate bill, that would really help us speed up the process. If obviously you run out of anywhere that you can actually find it, then of course we will help you. But uh, we would ask very politely if you could actually try to find your business rate number yourselves. Uh, we've also been asked whether or not a bounce back loan will be taken into account. The government this time are not looking at the levels of, uh, of bank accounts of the, you know, the, you know, whether or not you've got £2,000 or £20,000 in your business account. If you meet the criteria for a restart grant or a, uh, an additional restrictions grant, you will receive the grant. Um, Another question around, do you need to include furlough payments in the total amount of support that you've received from the government? The government have made it clear that what they're looking for is the total amount of business support grants you have received. So if you've received the self-employed support payments or you've received furlough payments, you do not have to include those in the box. We have asked for clarification from the government around this. And uh, if that changes, we will put something on our website to let you all know. Next slide, please, Peter. Um, when will I receive my grant? We aim to make the payment within 20 days. Obviously, for those businesses that don't meet the criteria for the additional restrictions grant that we will accept an application from, those, those will take longer because we will be making a decision on those last. And it will probably be the middle of May before we actually make the decision on those businesses. 
How much will I receive is dependent on your rateable value for business rate for restart grants and the fact that you're liable to pay business. Obviously, for the additional restrictions grant, I've gone through the figures that we're looking at at the moment. But um, as I've specified, those figures will change if we get a huge influx of applications because we as a council, we want to support as many businesses as we possibly can. Uh, which grant to apply for again if you are liable to pay business rates even if you receive a zero bill then you will apply for a restart grant if you are not liable to pay business rates then that's you apply for the additional restrictions grant so when do the schemes close uh, the restart grant closes on the 30th of june and all payments will be made by the 31st of july and the additional restrictions grant closes on the 31st of May and all payments will be made by the 30th of June. And on this occasion, whereas the um, discretionary scheme in May to May last year, we were able to accept late applications. This year, we will not be able to accept late applications for the schemes because we have to comply to the government dates for closing down the payments. Uh, next slide, please, Peter. Um, any questions or have I just <laughs> baffled you all? Thank you, thank very, you very much, much Jude. Jude. Um, uh, thank you for taking us through all of the details for the uh, for the grants and the eligible categories and also the process. So can I open this up now to any questions? If there's anything that anybody feels we haven't answered or a question you've thought of as Jude has been going through those slides, you can either raise your hand um, and I'll come to you to for you to ask your question or if you prefer you can post the question in the chat bar on the right hand side. You should be able to raise your hand for those who aren't familiar with Teams, there should be a little raise the hand bar at the icon at the top of the screen um, I can see Selena with your actual hand up so we'll we'll come to you um, Selena Rooney uh, we'll just get Chris to unmute you so you can ask your question yeah Selena's able to unmute herself now so she just needs to do that oh can you just unmute yourself Selena okay thank you um, if you have put the application form in already um, will it still be July before you uh, receive the payment? Sorry, that's me. Which application did you put in, please? Were you a restart grant or were you an additional a restart, restart grant? grant. I, no. I'm sorry, I have a, a shop in Hartford. No, no, the only pe the only applications that will be slightly delayed or will be any application through the additional restart grant that does not meet the the initial priority criteria. So uh, if you've applied for a restart grant, the staff have started processing those already. OK, thank you. You're welcome. Thanks, Jude. Any other questions that anybody would like to ask? Either. Um, raise your hand or put them in the, the chat bar and we can come to you. Um, we've got a question from Gaina Sina. Gaina, do you want to unmute yourself? Hi, can you hear me? Yes, yes. we can now. Hi. Hi, um, I'm part of a business uh, district, you know, improvement district. So I've had a link through from Adam Gerrard, who's the town centre manager, but I know of a couple of people that have got their own businesses outside the business improvement district area, and they've been asking me how to find the link. Is it on the website? Is it easy to find? You know, how do I direct them to, to this link? We've actually put the link in the chat, um, but what we can do is uh, we've had a few technical problems, I'm afraid, with the with the spreadsheet, uh, sorry, with the presentation where we did have the link on the presentation. So we're trying to fix that so when we can circulate the presentation, but it is quite simple to find on the website. If you if they do have a problem, um, we uh, we do we do tweet it regularly so I can arrange for it to be tweeted again. We can put it through our Facebook page and we can put it through LinkedIn. So uh, but it is currently in the chat uh, of, of this process. If you of this uh, webinar, if you if you want to take a copy of it from there. OK, 
Yeah. Bye. Thanks. You're welcome. We will also be sharing the slides, as Jude said, after the, the meeting and we'll we'll make sure that the link is is clear um, in, in that and is the right link to, to take you to the application form as well. So um, we'll make yeah. sure we get those out after I the mean, meeting. I'll, I'll be able to get the link from the letter that I got off the email from the Business Improvement District so I can let people that yeah. ask me, you know, because I, I run the Northwich Independent Retailers Association, so I can share it that way. But Obviously, that would be quite onerous for me to have to do yeah. that for everybody yeah. else. Me. So if I can just say, look at the website, it's yeah. it's here. It's very clear. It is it's very clear. Great. Yeah, if you just direct Thanks people to much. the council website. Thanks, Gaynor. Um, we've got another question. I'll just, uh, just can't place who it is at the minute. Um, Sarah Kirkup, would you like to unmute yourself, Sarah, and ask your question? Hi there, I've just recently joined my organisation um, and I think I'm not clear whether they've applied in previous rounds. Do you say there was a previous round of the restart grant scheme? And if so, could you apply to this one again if you've been successful in another round? Um, no, the, the previous grants, the restart grants run from the 1st of April. So they're brand new from the 1st of April and all other grants pretty much have closed from the 31st of March. There is one exception to that called the uh, Local Restrictions Grant Closed Addendum 5th of January 2021 for a nice, you know, easy, easy phrase to say. Um, but if they have, if, if a business has applied for a, a restart grant and would be eligible for a grant in the Local Restrictions Grant Closed January the 5th Addendum payments, we will automatically make those payments. Is that OK? Yeah, um, I think sometimes there's been a bit of confusion about which council streams they've applied for. So I'll just double check if um, what what they had applied for previously. OK, no problem at all. Thanks, Sarah. I think the key message is, though, for everybody is that if you're eligible for this, you need to apply again, like uh, using the new the new forms, yes. isn't it, Jude? You know, it's it's not automatic from the previous from the previous grants you've applied for. Any other questions from anybody? Um, yeah, we've got, sorry, there's just a delay. Um, Stephen Holmes. Stephen, do you want to ask your question? If you just want to unmute yourself. I didn't do that before, sorry. Um, the uh, application form, uh, did you say that we're going to need to supply bank statements this time, which we didn't do? With the previous ones yeah it's it's only one bank statement though so as you go through the would that be for a restart grant um or would yeah. that be for an, yes yeah. um it's just one bank statement and it's enable us to to start to do the prepayment checks so it's just to upload your most recent one business bank statement that's all we're asking for right okay that's fine because we've got of it, we, we've got sort of four four shops, so if I was supplying, but we bank it all separate, all together, basically under one bank account. So I didn't want to start doing four lots of bank bank statements. Yeah, yeah, brilliant. Thank you very much. That's lovely. Thanks for your help. You're Thanks, welcome, Stephen. Um, next, we've got David. Hi there. Hi. Hi. So the business, sorry, the bank account statements that you want, can you apply through personal accounts as well? Because I don't have a, a business bank account. We, we're going to find that there are many businesses, uh, or we found that as we've been running our previous tranches of um, additional restrictions grant, that some individuals, especially smaller business, don't have business accounts. They have a personal account. But all we'll need to see is that pretty much that there are transactions coming in and out that relate to the business and that the bank account details matches those details of the person making the application. OK, great. Thank you very much. Thank you. You're very welcome. Thanks, David. Anyone else want to ask a question? I can't see any other hands up if colleagues can just check as well. Um, I can't see any other hands up so um what we'll do is we will make sure that we release the slides um we'll share the slides with you either by email or i think we can probably post them in the chat straight after and you'll still have access to them we 
but we'll, we'll make sure you get access to them either way. We're going to also post this on the website, uh, this um, webinar, so that people that couldn't make it can rewatch it again um, and get the information. Obviously, all the information is available on our website. Um, and as we've said, um, just go to the home page and you'll be able to navigate your way to the grants page where there's lots of other information and contact details as, as well. Um, and obviously the application forms, which um, as Jude has explained uh, very thoroughly today. Um, we also just wanted to draw your attention to there is another webinar running tomorrow uh, morning uh, that the council is uh, is putting on um, and this is focused uh, targeted at personal care businesses so who's due to said they are um, obviously eligible for the grants um, so that uh, webinar is going to focus on um, information to help reopening, uh, particularly for um, personal services, so hairdressers and personal care and the like. Um, the link is on the screen now um, and it's 10.30 tomorrow morning. So um, there is still time to register for that if that applies to anybody on this call and you would find that useful. Um, we will be um, running some other sort of focused webinars uh, for particular sectors, possibly with our public health colleagues. So we'll share information on those um, as and when through the usual channels. Um, Jill's also just posted in the chat that you can register for the business support on our Let's Talk um, Cheshire West website as well, which is the link is, is in the chat. Um, so thank you all again very much for joining us for this session. We hope you found it useful um, and um, you've got what you need now to put your applications in to the Restart Grants. And we wish everybody who is opening up from Monday um, all the very best. And we're looking forward to um, visiting and, uh, and having more businesses open again in our borough after what's been a very difficult difficult um, year to say the least. So um, wishing you all very well and we will see you again hopefully on another one of these sessions. Thank you very much.